Hi everybody, uh, Merry Christmas. It's Bob Young coming to you from the offices of Redline Archaeology. Not really in the offices. This is just my jobby, my fun hobby. Um, so I haven't done a video like this in a while, but this collection I felt is more than worthy of a video like this uh, in unwrapping and unveiling. Uh, this collection, uh, the background on this, original one owner, uh, the gentleman in Tennessee, the name of the town was Ultawa, O-O-L-T-E-W-A-H. I hope I spelled that and, said, and pronounced it right. Uh, Ultawa, Tennessee, a very nice gentleman, guy named Alan. Uh, we had some great conversations, some good laughs. Um, uh, a lot of times people my age grew up very similar backgrounds, uh, very similar paths in life, life, very similar experiences with parents, church, everything. Um, it was just the times in the, in the late 60s, but great times. But uh, the story is he was watching Pawn Stars and he saw the rear loading uh, pink beach bomb on there. And uh, it stirred him into digging out his cars thinking, oh, wow. My, my cars from my childhood might be worth some money. And so he pulled them out. Uh, he went on the internet. He found me right away, like most people do. And he reached out to me, sent me pictures, wonderful pictures. Overhead group shots are the best. If, you, if you're trying to do this thing, get the overhead group shots first and then ask for the, the rarer cars, uh, you know, both sides, front and back, top and bottom pics. And 99% of people will oblige you and send you whatever you want. I think the biggest hurdle with getting pictures, whether it's through email or texting, I prefer texting, um, is to make sure that they're well lit and in focus. Um, some of these older phones, a lot of these people have, or I shouldn't say a lot, but a fair amount have, really don't have the definition that these uh, iPhones have, the recent generations. Uh, they're just amazing with what they show. And like I always say, a lot of times I get these collections and it, it, the surprises are usually good. Years ago, the surprises went the other way uh, with more scratches or nicks or toning. But nowadays, um, it's it, these cameras pick up artifact dust that looks like scratches or nicks. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's been my experience that sometimes I'll actually end up sending a few hundred more dollars to these owners, just to be fair to let them know that, you know, this car turned out to be a little bit more valuable and I, I, or these, this group of cars did. And I just want to be fair and send you some more money because that's how I would have appraised it in the first place. So um, 46 cars in total. Uh, I think six were Sizzlers in really good shape. Uh, you don't normally find them in that this good a shape, but the rest of the cars are just amazing. The nice thing that the gentleman did, the case is in great shape as well, 48 car collector case. What he did, and I spoke to him the other day after we confirmed receipt of the check and the collection, he told me he put them in by production year. So these are 67, 68, 69, 70, or the mixture of them on two layers, depending on how many per year. But I thought that was really interesting. I haven't had anyone do that for me. Uh, but he, he put them in there as per production year. And uh, so let's get started with uh, the first 16. Um, I was really impressed with this collection. And you have to understand something, I turn down more collections that are offered to me than I actually purchase. I'm pretty picky with what I buy. And um, just because, you know, the market does soften up like it, it has recently. And uh, the lesser and more common stuff in lesser condition, you, you can't even give some of it away. So it's not even worth purchasing. But here's the first one. This is actually the first car I ever owned. This is a beautiful example of custom Camaro, US, white interior. I mean, they just don't look like this when you get them after all these years, I mean, think about it. Produced in 67, released in 68. So this car is what, 56 years old now? And uh, I don't know many things that look this good after 56 years, but just a beautiful, beautiful example of this. Really nice one. Um, and he had, he had duplicates of some, uh, some of the cars, I guess, uh, you know, his parents bought him some stuff. Now here's a toned out, except for the hood, and we know the story behind that, a toned out uh, Hong Kong Camaro, but 
sadly, it's just um, really not much play wear at all. It's just that, that dark toning that you get with the Hong Kong paint, black roof, really a uh, bad piece, but sadly it was evenly toned out except for the hood. But yeah, had a darker interior, but actually a pretty cool looking car, you know, uh, if, if you're doing rainbows of Camaros. Um, you can display that from either side. It's just really, really stunning color. So, um, moving along here, we've got a Mustang, the gold one. Again, Hong Kong, really nice condition for a Hong Kong gold. Gold is not, in, in the Mustang, it's pretty common color. I find a lot in gold, but um, not in this condition, especially the Hong Kong models. Um, are usually pretty tore up. Even the, the tail lights, one side's pretty good, the other side, a little bit worn, maybe from storage, maybe from getting hit. But I just don't see any nicks on this. Really a nice example of a gold Hong Kong. And just a stunning base on that. So let's see, we got a VW here. We got a Barracuda and a Firebird coming up. I'll try to move this along. Beautiful base on this VW. You got the Hong Kong uh, I'd say this is orange, toned out evenly, uh, with a white interior, but again, you know, pretty nice color, it's evenly toned, so it's, uh, really in really nice shape, the headlights are really bright, usually they're all tore up, and, uh, yeah, pretty, for a Hong Kong 60, uh, 68, pretty nice. This guy really was a good steward of this collection as a child. I mean, he kept all the buttons in place and uh, really nice. Here's a beautiful, you know, common color. But like I always say, the uncommon thing about a car like this is this condition. So look how pretty and shiny that Spectra Flame paint is on a Hong Kong Firebird. Look at that base. You know, it's just really nice, really nice example of 68s here. Uh, let's see what we got here. This is a Barracuda. Copper, common color. Hong Kong. But again, the uncommon thing about this is condition. Beautiful base. Just a really pretty example of, this, of that casting. Again, 56 years old. So we got, you know, Dior coming up. We got beautiful Python green, common color. Hong Kong. Beautiful base, really virtually unplayed with this collection is, even the roof unmarked. Beautiful example, Python. Let's see, I couldn't see the button on this one. This looks like a T-Bird to me. Yep, custom T-Bird, aqua, common color. Beautiful though, Hong Kong. Really, really nice example. Nice collection. I mean, if you swap out the wheels here, you got a really, really pretty piece. Nice tail lights. Again, another great example of a 68. Really nice. I got some dust on it. Nope, it's got a little scrape, it looks like, on the front. Here's a gold Yura with the surfboards, which tells you lightly played with collection. Beautiful wheels. This one doesn't even look like it was ever run down the track. Hong Kong again, and uh, stunning base on it. I mean, when these things are stored in climates like here on the East Coast, Mid-Atlantic, Southeast part of the country, Midwest, you know, we have a lot of heat and humidity. We have a lot of cold, uh, wet winters, um, extreme shifts in temperature. A lot of people have attics and basements, which don't have the best climates. Um, so for these things to hold up the way they have is, is, to me, is unusual. I mean, I get a lot of collections offered to me from the, you know, from the, those parts of the country. And when they come out of stores like this after all these years, they don't look this good. This one, this must have been stored in an area maybe on the first or second floor of a house. I should have asked the gentleman that. But, I mean, look at the color of this gold beauty of a 57 bird. I mean like right off the factory line, this one. Just a beautiful, beautiful example. Everything, the hood's not even toned or anything on that. 
It's a U.S. casting, which explains some of that. Uh, here we go. We got a 32 Vicky. Uh, Olive. I really don't see much of anything wrong with this, other than maybe some factory stuff on it. A little bit of spotty. Uh, maybe some spotty toning on the one side. But a gorgeous, gorgeous piece. Really, really nice. Give you a little shot of the collection so far. I, I, I don't know who would be unhappy with a collection like this. And for as long as I've been doing this, this is this is a special collection. Not that I don't hit a lot of special collections, but this is one of them. Beautiful purple Hong Kong. Wait, is that Hong Kong? I don't know. That looks U.S. to me. No, it's U.S. Uh, silhouette. Must be the color of the uh, interior is a little bit off. But really a pretty example. Of this. I, I used to love this car. I had this in, uh, uh, I guess, lime yellow or lime green when I was uh, growing up. It was one of the first ones. And the front of it separated on me. I kept trying to glue it down as a kid. It was funny. When I pulled my collection out, you could still see all the Elmer's glue I tried to use as a kid. Yeah, that's all we had in the house. But, man, that's a pretty silhouette. That's one of the nicest ones I've seen in a while. All right, there's the first tray. Let's move on to the second. I'll keep moving this along. Uh, here we go. We got a beautiful chappy with the wing, which tells you again. Probably wasn't played with a whole bunch. Look how shiny that paint is on that. Just a beautiful, beautiful example. The roundels are there, the numbers. Just a gorgeous, gorgeous piece. Let's see, we got here, what's this? Uh, Corvette. Beautiful, beautiful Corvette. Blue, I think it's got a nick on one of the sides here from what I remember. Yep, there it is, back rear fender. But, I mean, for the Corvette guys out there, this is a beauty. Look at that blue, deep, deep blue paint on that. You know, nice US casting. Really pretty. Uh, here's the other Mustang, the blue one, which I remember being really nice. Yeah, wow. Like factory, factory US Mustang. Look at that beauty. Look at that example of that. You just don't see Mustangs like this, I'm sorry. People can argue that point with me all day, but you just don't get them like this anymore. Now, when I started 30 some years ago doing this, yeah, I could get them looking like this a lot more frequently. 20, 30 years ago, but nowadays, because of the age and how they've been stored, a lot of that, a lot more condition issues pop up because of that beautiful twin mill. Look at the gorgeous red of that. Boy, what a Christmas car that is, huh? Beautiful red Spectra flame. Very cool casting. Always liked that car. All right, looks like we got the Lola Gold, which I know. It's uh, common casting, but again, what's uncommon, A, it's gold. I don't see many gold ones. And in that shape with the stickers being just as nice. I mean, that is a really, really pretty car. To me, if I was uh, looking to have one really pretty example of each red line era car in my collection, this would certainly make it. Okay, let's see what we got here. We got another twin mill. Oh, he must have liked an orange one. One of my favorite red line colors. And real pretty. Just, just beautiful. I can't say enough about this collection so far. But, wow, how nice is that? Nice red one and a nice orange one right next to each other. After all these years, this is like Christmas for me. All over again. Nice rose pink. White interior, split in image, U.S. Again, you're just not going to find them like this. That's what makes them rare in this condition. That's the rarity right there. Gorgeous, gorgeous car. Oh, starting to run out a little bit of room here. Which is always a good problem in the red line world. Running out of room to put your red lines. Oh, beautiful. Oh, beautiful, beautiful magenta. U.S. Beatnik Bandit with a white interior. Wow. <laughs> Man. Look at that. 
I, I can absolutely say it's the nicest magenta U.S. white interior beatnik I've ever had. I just picked up a really nice yellow one, similar condition, white interior U.S., but this is, uh, that's stunning. That's a stunning piece. Again, if you're looking to do one example of each casting from the red line here, this is one you'd put in there. That is really beautiful. That's even better in person. I hope it shows up okay on there. Uh, that's, can't say enough about that. Here we go, we got orange hot heap. Uh, US, beautiful, beautiful example. Kind of like it with that uh, goldish type of uh, interior. But there's a beautiful example of a 68. Really nice. Wow. Thank you, Alan, if you're watching. Uh, I'm really honored that you allowed me to be the uh, owner of this collection. It's, you know, some of these cars will find their way into really passionate collectors' hands uh, down the road, I'm sure. And here's a beautiful orange Hong Kong nitty gritty with a white interior. Again, one of these ones that you just want to put in your collection. Just pretty, 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 pretty. Okay, let's see, moving on. I know there's more spoilers in here. I will get to them. Oh, we got the McLaren here. So we got US, a little toned up back hatch. Again, painted in a different part of the factory. That's why the hoods and the hatches and those other parts that were painted, that were assembled later. Why do you get toning there and not toning on the other spot? It's a shame that would have been a really pretty piece, orange and McLaren like that. I don't see a lot of orange ones. Oh, it looks like a heavy Chevy here. Common color, green in it. Let's see if this is an uncommon condition one. And it is. It's like factory. Factory fresh. There it is. Um, I just posted a new blog on my uh, website. It's called A Day in the Life of uh, a Redline Archaeologist, which is me. Um, it's a special day that happened a few weeks ago. Uh, three collections in one day. Uh, one local and two from across the country. But three pretty special collections. And just thought, yeah, something different. A little different twist on uh, what I normally write about. And lots of pictures and and stuff in there. I think you'll really enjoy it. I've gotten some great response on it, like I do. And I really appreciate the the messages and the emails and uh all the all the kind comments and complimentary stuff that passionate collectors around the the world send me i really do appreciate it. and thanks for all your support with my two books i guess you can see them back there um both of them are still active on amazon and uh i get a lot of nice uh, reviews and compliments on them as well uh let's see i'm gonna save the best for the last of this tray. I won't torture you guys too long with it. This is one that really stuck out to me. One of the ones that really stuck out to me when I first evaluated this collection. Let me get some of these uh, bubble wrap guys out of here for now. Um, this Porsche 917, US, white interior. Just stunning in apple green. Yeah, well, I'm an old school guy. I call that apple green. Look at the taillights, just perfect. Not, not perfect, but near perfect, I should say. Nothing's perfect. There is a real shiny base. Look how pretty that is. I really like this this casting. I really like that color in this casting. One of my favorites. Beautiful. I mean, this is, this is a, a stunning collection. Look at that so far. I mean, I, th this is like a lifetime of collecting in one collection for a lot of people. This is just amazing. You know, 46 cars. Um, I've got another really incredible one, one coming in. Uh, I don't want to say too much right now because it's not in my hands yet. Uh, it's not like Yogi Berra said, it ain't over till it's over. But um, got another real special one coming in. Some amazing, amazing pieces. And uh, this one's going to be record setting coming up. But stay tuned. Be sure to subscribe to this channel. I always say that at the end. But and hit the notifications button so not to miss any of these incredible collections and finds that I dig up around the country on a fairly regular basis. Um, 
there's a really nice 312p Ferrari. Big Ferrari fan. Always have been, even as a little boy. Always loved Ferrari. Movie's coming out on Monday, too. Story of Ferrari. Uh, can't wait to go see that. I'm going to go with some of my car guys, I think, and check it out. Or not. Or just take my wonderful wife with me. Uh, she likes Ferraris, too. Oh, boy, look at this Lotus. Beautiful blue. I l really like that color uh, in red lines. I especially like it in this casting. That's a Hong Kong. I just picked up a real funky Lotus in one of my other collections. I think I highlighted it in one of the videos here. Um, had a really strange uh, windshield on it. Never saw one like that before. First one ever. But, you know, it's funny whenever I pick up a, a funky piece. I just got a hot heap, too. Very similar. A lot of na naysayers come out of the woodwork, you know, about this kind of stuff. And listen, I don't claim to be the expert. I, I claim to be an expert in doing this. You know, finding the stuff. I don't claim to be the expert of experts in Hot Wheels. I don't think anybody truly is. I just think there's always stuff to learn, and I'm always open to learning stuff. So, um, you know, when, when th something is found, we should talk about it and try to find out more and more about it. But I've picked up a few cars and collections recently that have never been seen before. Uh, and I, I'm holding on to them right now, trying to dig up some information. I actually sent some pictures and a, and a, a note to somebody I know that was uh, very instrumental in the think tank for Mattel back in the day. Uh, Indy Eagle, green, beautiful example. Uh, there's not one car in here that really uh, is beat up. It's a really, really nice collection. All right, not many more to go, folks. I'm going to get through another half of this tray and then three quarters of the final tray. So, um, this problem is aqua. Everything's there. A little bit of the chrome is gone off the back engine. But other than that, really nice example. Problem. Repco F1. There we go. Remember, if there's a Shelby in here, I guess not. Maybe didn't didn't complete it. But. Ah, look at this apple green Carabo. Wow, amazing, amazing, just beautiful, beautiful example. Look at that. I really dig the concept cars. I really do. A lot of people go after the customs and spoilers. I like them too. Don't get me wrong. I like them all, but the. Concept cars for me are really cool. I mean, you know, you got the suicide doors here that come out on these cars. And don't forget to go through your Hot Wheels. There's lots of little uh, gadgets on a lot of different uh, cars, including the heavyweights. You might not even know exists, you know. Um, you, you, you'd be surprised at what you find messing around with some of these cars. I, I, I did as a kid. I played with them a lot for a few years. And, you know, 50 years later, I'm finding out things about them I didn't even know back then but I spent most time with them here's a copper Hong Kong oh no this looks more like a this more more like a, a red um, Hong Kong white interior ambulance a little bit of toning even light it's very slight but I think it's more even toned but really nice example though of the heavyweight you're going to see something in a minute here, guys. You might fall off your chair, but it's the highlight of the collection. Really nice sand crab. Beautiful magenta. Great color for this piece. Another casting I really liked as a kid. 69 sand crab. Beautiful example. There's not one car in here that I, you could really criticize. It's just amazing. And why I'm making this video. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Mongoose, Tom McEwen, stickers all there. Nice example. All right, let's see where the snake is. I think it's a snake two, if I remember. Is it? Yeah, snake two, white, beautiful. Again, I really like this. I prefer this over the, the yellow one, the original one. I really like that in white. Look at that. Tampos, everything. Just gorge. Wow. Really, really nice. Well, I guess he I guess he didn't like the yellow either. <laughs> he waited till the next year and got the snake too, the white. I don't blame him. Red Baron. 
This one, if you find them with the shiny helmet, hold on to them. Because I'd have to say 90% of them, 95% of them don't come with the shiny helmet. They just they just uh, get that patina on them. And uh, that's it. You're done. I, I guess you could shine them up if you wanted to. I don't touch them. But, yeah, this one's got the spike on it, too, on the helmet. But... That was one of my favorite pieces growing up, and we couldn't find that in the Philadelphia area. And I actually wrote a letter to Mattel, and three months later, they sent me a box of cars. Couldn't get the cord, couldn't get the beach bomb, and couldn't get the Red Baron. The Red Baron was the one I really wanted, and they sent it to me. It took them three months to get back to me, but Mattel was good back then. I've heard that story, and I've actually gotten collections um, from people who have given me the original mailing box, and one of my the most amazing collections I purchased was from Tacony, uh, Pennsylvania, right over the Tacony Palmyra Bridge. Um, it's I write about it in my first book, and the guy had same thing. Uh, you can read the book, and uh, it's really an amazing story. But the same thing, he wrote Mattel. And he said about three months later, from when he remembered, they sent him that box of cars. And when I opened up that box of cars, and was fell off my seat. I think they're. I think there was a purple cougar in there, um, an orange cord, which people to this day still say I didn't have it, but I have witnesses and uh, that saw it firsthand. It's in somebody's private collection around the country. It's a real orange cord. They must have just uh, had it painted and pulled right off the line for this gentleman. Uh, it was a real deal. And we put it up against other oranges and other reds and took pictures and the whole thing. I mean, but... I would love to dig out those pictures. And my friend Todd, who uh, handled all that for me back in the day, he, he looked extensively for it and couldn't pull it up. But I'm going back almost 30 years now when I had that collection. So um, that stuff got lost. But here's the highlight of the collection. Uh, I still have a few more to go through, but look at this baby. Now, that, I think... I guess it was a red or a pink or or something. You can see down the middle of the stripes. Those 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 stickers uh, that were applied um, in the middle. You can see a little bit change in the color there. But look at this car, Hong Kong white interior. Uh, there's really nothing wrong with it, and it is stunningly beautiful. But that's what tells you that it's not. Over chrome, along with, you know, the over chrome cars, you don't see like the blemishes or the toning or anything like that. Not that it's any on here, except for a little tiny mark right here. I don't even know if you can see it there. But, you know, people will tell you that the over chrome pink ball sauce um, was produced. I'm sure there are some around there in collections. I've never found one. I was excited when I first saw this collection. I had to get more pictures of it, but I always look between the stripes there, as you can see. Uh, a little bit different color, but look at that piece. I mean, you talk about an amazing, I mean, that's top of the mark for uh, anyone's collection right there, showing that off. It's a spoiler, it's a boss horse, it's white interior. I always say, look, if you want the true color of the car, look around the engine bay, and that'll tell you what the color of is. I've had orange King Kuda, black roof, white interior on the card, and took it outside in the sun. It was a little bit toned out, but the true color is usually around the engine bay. For me, that's what I've learned over the years. So I'm going to put that right up front. That's a killer piece. I mean, that is just, just killer. So, all right, folks, I'm on the last tray here. I hope I'm not boring you too much. Uh, like I said, I do get a lot of compliments uh, regarding my videos, and I really do appreciate it. So thank you all again. And... Uh, like I said, check out my blogs. I got a bunch of blogs online. I'm just going to pull out the Sizzlers, and I'll show you each one. There's a Jackrabbit special. No, not Jack in the Box. I wish I had never found one of those. I have found an Ed Shaver, uh, Blue AMX, but I've never found a Jack in the Box. You, you would think I would have had a Jack in the Box Jackrabbit special before I got an Ed Shaver, but I didn't. Now, here is, um, this looks like Hong Kong to me. It is. Can't really tell because the blue is reflecting. Uh, tan interior, Hong Kong, a little bit of that fooey on top. But other than that, that's a really pretty King Kuda. Really nice. I'll put that right back here. Uh, let's see. 
There's another Sizzler. We'll, I'll show you all of them at the end. Here's another Sizzler. Even the Sizzlers are immaculate. There is a really pretty Aqua Nomad. I know these have become a lot more popular in the last five years. And I do get a fair amount of these. And just beautiful. A lot of times those hoods will be toned out. This one, a little bit towards the front of it. Slight wispy on the front. I don't know if you can pick that up or not. But it's not towards the back. It might be picked up as towards the back, but it's really not. But boy, what a beautiful, beautiful example of a Nomad. Uh, let's see. No, oh, this is a really nice piece, too. Yeah, not that uncommon of a color, but man, look at that. That really stood out to me, too. I, I think that's such a cool casting, the AMX, too. You know, I picked up, uh, I, I grabbed two blue ones one time on the card. A local collection years ago. But that's like the rarest color in these. But man, what a pretty, pretty piece. I'll put that up front too. And let's see what we got here. We got King Kuda Club Car, which I think of the three are the rarest. I get the heavy Chevy sometimes, and I get the boss horse all the time. But the King Kuda, I rarely get that club car. So he was lucky as a kid that he sent away for it. Um because he did get, I think, the rarest of the of the three. Another Sizzler. Beautiful condition. Now, I don't know all the Sizzler's names. Uh, this looks like a Ford Mark IV to me. Let me see if I can find it. Usually on the back, there's a Ford Mark IV. Beautiful green. I am a huge fan of the Sizzlers. That's where I had most of the fun growing up, was with these Sizzlers. Now, this one, I forget what they called this one. Oh, Rev in Heaven, and that's pink. But look at that. I mean, even the chrome's still there. I don't know how he stored these and kept it, you know, the chrome from being eaten up by the battery acid, but it's just beautiful. I mean, if you're a Sizzler collector, man, this is it. Uh, let's see. This is the uh, Boss 302. Beautiful orange. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous car. I know they don't, you know, they don't have a lot of value, but to me, they were, man, about as fun as they get. Firebird Trans Am in brown, really pretty color for that. Just a gorgeous, gorgeous piece. Huge fan of the Sizzlers. Now, this is, which one is this? Ford Mark, Ford Mark Four, yeah. Uh, look like looked like the acid got to this one and none of the other ones. But, you know, Sizzlers are usually all chromes ripped off of them because of the battery acid. But, um, so there it is, folks. That is the Ultawa Tennessee original one-owner collection. Um, in all its glory. Let me give you a final pass through so you can see it all. Sizzlers, man, these are cool. These are amazing. Just amazing condition. Um, I'll put that ball sauce up there by itself. It's so special. Well, if you notice in a lot of my pictures, I, I am I am on um, Facebook. It's a member-only page, uh, Redline Archaeology. Um, you will need a reference to get into it and just send a request and, and who your reference is, and we'll go from there. Okay? Uh, lots of pictures of the collections, videos, uh, lots of discussions, chats, everything on there. It's a really fun page. So uh, I hope you'll come and visit me on there as well. But here's a collection. Let me uh, just give you one final shot there. There she is, folks. Beautiful collection out of the wonderful state of Tennessee. How about that? Look at that. That is, that's one for the record books, folks. Well, listen, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, everybody, and Happy Holidays to everybody. Um, I appreciate you uh, spending the last 30, 34, 35 minutes with me. Um, like I said, subscribe, hit the notification button, hit the like button if you like this uh, video. And, um, you know, you can uh, message me, uh, go to my website. All my contact information is there. You can comment on the blogs. Um, go to Amazon. Uh, you can pick up both of my books right there. Uh, I think they're both on sale right now for the holiday. 
Um, if you're a passionate red line person like me, I think you'll really enjoy all the stories located in both of them. It's not all about Hot Wheels. It's about growing up in the 60s as well. But I also put a bonus feature in the last one uh, telling you how to do what I do, step by step. Uh, I hope you all have a great, happy, healthy New Year and a wonderful uh, Christmas with your family. And I uh, hope you all have a uh, experience like this one day because to me it's Christmas all over again 1968 1969 1970 uh, sometimes 71 72 73 74 but it really is a great feeling uh, to get collections like this and I, I, I think I celebrate a little tiny piece of my childhood Christmas probably about 50 times a year with all these collections I find so listen uh, best of luck to you, and uh, God bless, and uh, Merry Christmas. It's Bob Young signing off, Redline Archaeology. Take care, everybody, and we'll see you soon.